Okay, so you still young at this time. Yeah, I'm about I'm about 17, 18 now. Okay, do you and and you're from Chicago. It ain't like you from New York City where the music industry was going crazy at the time. Do you know who Eddie F is at that moment? Like when he comes downstairs and y'all just singing for anybody was in your mind he just another anybody or was y'all like yo that's Eddie F right there? No, we knew he was famous, but we didn't I, I didn't know me personally. I didn't know exactly his impact on the music business, like what he was doing behind the scenes. I didn't know about the untouchables and all the other stuff he was doing. I just knew that, you know, that was Heavy D's DJ. He was somebody important. Man, let's sing for this guy. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what we did. But uh, but we didn't know exactly what, like, what he had his hands in. Okay. And, it, you know, even for that matter, how much did you even get your hopes up high? Because, you know, people... They talk that talk every day of the week. Right. Yo, don't sing for nobody. I got you. Like, everybody know the music industry is cutthroat. The music industry is shady. Everybody promising you stuff that they can't come through on. So when he told y'all, like, nah, serious. Like, I'm going to get y'all a record deal. Did y'all take him serious at all? Not really. I mean, because we had heard that so many times by so many different people. So it was like, all right, cool. As soon as he walk away, we'll just go do it for somebody else. And I mean, we, we didn't stop singing for other people. We just kept doing it. We didn't think that he was gonna uh that he was gonna be real. But ultimately he was real, man. He was like, yo, dude, I, I'm telling y'all, I wanna sign y'all. Like, chill, you know, I got you. And uh and he did, man. He he did exactly what he said he was gonna do. Okay, beautiful. So y'all go back out to Shy. Two months later, he sends, like, yo, I was real about what I said. Yeah. I need y'all here. So, so where you do you fly back to New York or to New Jersey at the time? Because I know he was living in Jersey. Jersey, right? So we flew. We flew to Jersey. Um, it was a four member group. We all flew to Jersey, and uh, when we get there, um, he had the laid out. You know, we stand at his crib, and uh, and he's working on uh, the Untouchables presents. I think he had it. Untouchables present out. And it was coming out of Motown, and um, and we went in the studio and worked with Dave Hall. Uh, to do a song for that album. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, it, and this is another thing that people don't really understand, but when you're trying to make it in the music industry, or any industry for that matter, you do whatever it takes. So when y'all flew in, you at his crib. I'm, a sh I'm sure he wasn't living in a one bedroom. He at EF at the time, so right. he was popping. Right. But right. was y'all bunking up in one room? Did he have y'all sleeping on bunk beds? Like, how was y'all <laughs> living in the crib? <laughs> now, <laughs> now, Eddie, hey man, Ed, Eddie was Eddie was a genius, man. He had a whole, he had a career full of artists. Cause he, are he, you serious? Yeah, he had a, he had a career full of artists, man. It, it wasn't just us. It was it was uh, another guy by the name of Vince that was there. It was a couple of groups that was there that he was, you know, he was he had a company. You know what I'm saying? But he had a whole bunch of people that was living in the crib with him. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was a bunch of us in this crib. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And it was dope. It was dope because everybody was like competing against each other to get that spot. You know, so just that environment itself was really dope to be around. Did any of the other groups that y'all was living in there with at the time, did any of them blow up? Um, Not that I know of. Well, well Chico the Bar, she was there. Oh, Chico was there um, at Chico the same there. time you um, was? Okay. I mean, it was quite a few people that was there, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Anthony Hamilton came through a couple times, you know, so it's a lot of people that blew up. You know, I should have asked you this earlier. When, when you was still out in Chicago... Chicago is known for that soulful sound. It's like it is so many incredible artists that emerge from Chicago. You know, everybody from R. Kelly, um, you know, Selena Johnson, um, Carl Thomas, to name a few. As y'all are growing up in the hood, you 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 got your group together and y'all are doing these talent shows. Did y'all ever bump heads with any of those Chicago artists that was really trying to come up at the same time as y'all? Nah. Really? Nah. Nope. Nope. How? Because you, so you know what? Because it's, 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 it was different eras. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like Dave Hollister, they was coming up a little bit before. Um, R. Kelly was before. Mm -hmm. Um, um, didn't never met Celine, uh, Selena Johnson until after I became an artist. And Carl, you know what I'm saying? I ain't meet Carl till we got to New York. And I seen him at Chad's and Wilson's. You know what I'm saying? That's where I met Carl at. So I, I never really? seen him in Chicago. 
Jennifer Hudson either. Not, not Jennifer either. Okay. Surprise it. Yeah. Because, you know, Chicago has produced so many iconic, like, the, the, the talent coming out of there is incredible. Um. Okay, so you get down with Eddie F. Yeah. You're in Jersey at the time. You're trying to make it like most artists do, doing whatever this man says to do, whenever he says to do it, trying to hone in your, on your craft as a singer, a writer, a producer. You got a baby. Yeah. That comes around the same time. Yeah, it, I got, it, I got it, two it, kids. You got two kids at that time? I got two kids. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 had two, I, had, I had two kids. I had almost like back to back. They probably like maybe maybe 11 months apart, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, two kids. Okay, what what was that like? What was your girl at the time? Was she supportive? Was she? And I'm assuming this is your girl from Chicago. Yeah, you're an R and B singer. She got you. She got two 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 of your kids. So there's a certain level of, you know, I I feel pretty stable here. But you moving in different crowds now. <laughs> <laughs> What was that like? Was she supportive? Because I'm assuming you're still broke at that time, but you're starting to work your way up the ladder. Yeah, I'm not. I'm still. I'm definitely still broke. You know, I mean, we ain't got a dollar. I mean, <laughs> we broke as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she was very supportive. But I mean, she was young too, because we both was young. You know, so so you know, we got two kids. I'm out here in Jersey. She in 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 uh in Chicago, and it was tough. You know, because she wanted to be around me. She wanted to be with me. I mean, for the whole group, we all had girls. And, and, mm -hmm. and one of the guys was married, but but uh, um, it was difficult, you know. I really wasn't seeing nobody out there in Jersey or nothing like that, but she was, you know what I'm saying? So she she was like, she started dating other people because, you know, I wasn't there. I, I was staying out there with Eddie for like maybe six months, sometimes longer than that. And so... Um, so so even while, even while she's raising your two kids, she's literally dating somebody else. Yeah, and yeah, definitely you're, definitely. you're a guy who is, I'm assuming at that time... You're getting invited to invite only parties. You're hanging around with celebrities, and you telling me keep it a hundred, Darnell. No, I'm keeping it one hundred. You telling man. me at you that, was not dating nobody? Nah, at that particular time, man, it was all about music for me, man. Like, like I, I wasn't even thinking about nothing except for getting to that bag and getting to this music. That's that's that was my whole focus. Even when they was going out hanging out, I was the one that wanted to stay in the studio and be around the music. I wasn't really into all the going out and hanging out. That didn't happen until a little bit later for me. Mm. Yeah. Damn, I mean, see, people don't understand, like, when it comes to this thing called success, the level of focus you have to have, uh, you know, really being able to, to stay focused in the midst of a whirlwind life. Because I know you hadn't quite blown at that time, but the access was there. And for you oh, yeah. to be like, nah, I wasn't out there. Like, I'm laser focused on being in the studio, working on my craft. That's what it takes to blow. And I wish so many young artists listened to this because they want to come in and celebrate before they even get the first hit record. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. No, nah, I mean, I think that's I think that's what Eddie's seen in me. He was like, yo, this dude right here is really serious about what he's trying to do because he's in the studio first thing in the morning and he's the last one to leave. And that's just, that was my mentality. Nice. Okay, so Untouchables Entertainment, that's a production company. Correct. They had a deal with, at the time, LaFace Records. Correct, yep. LaFace Records, the hottest thing on the planet. Well, at that time, and this, this is 93, 94, 95, somewhere in there, right? Right, yep. For anybody who lived through that era, LaFace up the ante crazy. Yeah, they did. Uh, you know, they really, really did. You know, TLC, Outkick, Tony Braxton. There were so many hits that came out of that camp. When was the first time that you actually met Kenny Babyface Edmonds and also L.A.? And when did y'all officially sign to LaFace? Well, what, what happened was um, after we had did the Motown record uh, with all the artists, the compilation record that Eddie had, um, I got introduced to Puff. And he was writing, he was working on, on Usher's album. And uh, Eddie was working on Usher's album as well. So I wrote a song with with, uh, with Eddie F for Usher called You Took My Heart. And then um, uh, Puff had heard that. And he was like, yo, I'm, I'm working on this other record for Usher. I've been trying to get people to write it, but the beat is kind of different. 
can you come through and, and, and see if you can write to this record? And um, went there, man, and, and, and wrote Think of You. That was on Usher's first album. Mm -hmm. That's when L.A. and Babyface heard about me because I had wrote three records on, his, on uh, Usher's album. So by the time we got down to, Eddie brought me down to, to Atlanta to meet L.A. because I, I met L.A. first. And I played him a couple of my records, and he was like, yo, dude, I want to sign you. Just come back with a, with a finished album, and, uh, and we're going to put you out. You know what I'm saying? It was just that simple. And, uh, and that's pretty much how I met uh, L.A. I didn't meet Babyface until uh, maybe some months later. Okay, so at that time, you took L.A. at his word. Like, yo, if, if, if I do what I'm supposed to do, I actually got a deal. And I don't just have a deal, but I got a deal on one of the hottest R&B labels in the country right now. Amazing, man. I mean, being in Chicago, man, and seeing this, like, L.A. and Babyface do their thing, and then be, being in front of him and, and being able to play my music for him and him, him loving what I was doing, it just made me feel like, yo, man, just, just go back and, and put your heart and your soul into this music. Because I know where, it was right was there. You, where was your heart really at? Was, was your heart on the singing side? Was it on the producing side? Was it on the writing side? Because I know you said you hooked up with um Puff, Puff at that time is working with a kid from Atlanta, um, executive producing his album, Usher. I think Usher at the time is like 15 years old, yeah. 16 years old. For you, was it important for you to blow as a singer? Did you not care? Like, I don't care how I get in this thing. I'll do it as a writer. I'll do it as a producer. Or was your heart always in, I'm going to make, no matter how I get in the door, I'm going to make it as a singer? It didn't matter to me, man. It didn't matter if I was on the writing side, the singing side. It, it didn't matter because I just wanted to be in the music business. You know, I, I, as a kid, man, I, I taught myself how to play the keyboard, all these things that I learned. And I, I wanted, I just wanted to be in the business. And and when I got the opportunity and, and was around Eddie and I and I started seeing all these other people that was in the business, I'm like, yo, I'm right here in the atmosphere. I mean, I should be able to make it. You know what I'm saying? I'm right here. I'm right. I'm at the door. Mm hmm. Looking at somebody, you know, even before I switch topics, looking at somebody like an Usher Raymond, that time, 15, 16 years old, did you know he was going to become what he became? Immediately. I mean, just, just, he was a star already. You know what I'm saying? His, his, his swag, I mean, just, just him as a person, his aura. He was dope, man. As a kid, he was dope. Super dope. So immediately, you're like, yo, this kid got it. I know it. I, I, when I seen him, I was like, yo, man, I mean, he played around a lot because he was a kid, but at the end of the day, he went, he delivered. He sung them records, man, and we kind of had similar voices. So for me, it was easy writing for him because mm -hmm. we kind of sounded similar in some ways. 